Right, this is the makings of a little um, disabled uh, buggy which I've been asked to have a go at constructing by a friend. Now, the front end of this uh, wasn't worth me purchasing the parts and making it up in, out of separate discrete components. Uh, just no point. Um, you could get this through Alibaba from a China um, manufacturer, a Chinese manufacturer. So um, that's what I've done. Got that through from Alibaba, got it posted into the UK. Now, uh, the design of this thing was supposed to be it had two swivel arms which connected on from here. Uh, one each side and then connected across to the frame of the uh, wheelchair. Now you have to buy the wheelchair separately. This is a second hand wheelchair, it's got some repairs I need to do. These plastic pieces will be coming off and I'll replace them with aluminium or something. So that's not an, not an issue. Uh, the arms on, the, on this thing um, swivel up and out the way on both sides and then lock back in. Um, now I was just considering uh, taking these wheels off and sawing or grinding the, these metal pipes off for holding the wheels uh, completely at the front, taking them off and then welding some box section in between here and here and doing away with the wheel. Um, but I've just realised that this is actually all aluminium the whole frame is aluminium um, and uh, I can MIG weld aluminium now but I personally will find it not as solid a job as if I potentially leave what's already existing. I do have a aluminium welding spool gun and I could probably do these modifications but it might be better to just leave it alone. Uh, so what I'm thinking is these wheels, uh, caster wheels, just unbolt down here. So I'm thinking they're going to be removed, ditched, as are these plastic pieces here for locking in the footrests which are missing with this wheelchair. I didn't receive the footrests, uh, which is why I got the wheelchair fairly cheap, because it's got problems, got some bits missing. But other than that, the brakes, hand brakes, uh, work quite efficiently. There's one of these on each side, so you can operate that and lock the wheels so that you can get in and out of the buggy uh, without it wheeling away on you. Um, so these wheels need to go and what I need to do is try and come up with a simple system where I can modify this link bar which hinges at this point here, uh, take this one away and make some sort of coupling which will go between there and here but also enable you to step in and out of the machine. Also, this large um, swivel point for the connecting arms and switch system, this can be done away with, that can be removed as it won't be required and it will free up a bit of place, a bit of um, space for getting people's legs in and out of the machine. Do away with that. So I need to come up with a nice neat way of having a connection between here and here. So that's what I'm staring at at the moment. But um, the, uh, the unit in itself works quite well. Uh, there's um, two brake levers but they both work to a disc brake down on the the front wheel here and the 350 watt motor is mounted in the centre of the wheel. It's a 12 inch wheel uh, I think 
Um, you can check the battery condition by pushing a button here. Fully charged is four green lights, if you can see them. Four green lights. Uh, this switch here is not power switch, it's not like an ignition on a car. It's a switch uh, or a key lock for being able to disengage the battery from the frame because the battery is the expensive component on electric vehicles. Uh, so by putting the key in one particular position, you can lift this battery unit out by pushing a button down here to release the battery. Uh, you turn the power on just here and you should be able to see, possibly see, yeah, you can see the um, the, the display on this. Um, if I sit in the unit now, without trying it, without knocking this over, there we go. Right, I can get in, and um, basically it's got three uh, power settings. We won't, I won't call them gears, but if I push the button here, there we go. You can see that in this. You'll see. One, two, and three. Well, yeah, I will call them gears for the sake of being easy to explain. Basically, that's three forward speeds or gears. And then if you push the down button here, it shifts back down, and then it goes to minus one, which is reverse uh, speed or reverse gear. So if I rock, if I put my feet down on this like footrest area down down there, I can swivel the unit back and take the wheel off the floor. So that's what I'm gonna do. But I'm going to try and do it with this arm here. It's gonna be a little awkward to do this, but I will I will try. <laughs> And you should see the wheel spin. Yeah. So, I think that was, yeah, that's reverse. So that's reverse, reverse gear. And push this into one and the wheel will obviously spin the other way for forwards it has a little horn button here and it also has a, uh, a headlight on the front which you uh, can possibly see down there Yeah, so uh, it's quite a nice little unit. Um, this switch gear here is a safety feature and um, I'm going to be removing it, as I say, because I want to get a little bit more leg space down inside here. I think by modifying all of this, I should be able to get it so that you can put your feet on the outer sides um, somewhere. You know, obviously I'm tall, I've got long legs, um, but I reckon it should be doable so that even I can ride this. Uh, it'll probably do about 15 kilometers per hour um, without the circuitry being modified in any way. Um, that's fast enough. Yeah, so uh, anyway, you turn the power off by pushing that button there and it goes off. So that's what I'm working on. Uh, I've got to come up with something that, that does that. So I could mount some sort of uh, linkage so that it comes from here and a bar going across and then going sideways left and right out to this pipe unit here but the important thing is not to get it in the way of people's legs so you can get in and out 
So that's that's the problem I'm sorting out at the moment. Anyway, let's see if I can get back out of this thing. Uh, one option is you raise this arm here. Yeah, get that out of the way. Then you can probably step out here and then like so. So that gets you in and out the thing without having an armrest in your way. You should be able to still step into it by putting one hand on here and one hand on here, then swinging your leg across, get in and then swivel the arm back over and it just clips in. So I think that's a doable thing. So I've just got to work on the finer points of making this arm, this link arm at the front and making it so that it's locked and solid. Right, I've uh, taken the wheels off. As you can see there, they are bolted quite easy. And what I've done is I have mounted two pieces of angle iron on, angle steel on. And um, at the bottom I've used one of the bolt holes which hold, uh, held the wheels on uh, down there. See there's a second hole higher up which I'm not using at the moment and uh, done the same on the other side over there stuck a bolt in at the bottom and then at the top end just there i've drilled another hole i'll put some better bolts in these are just roofing bolts at the moment just to uh, get the job done so i've now got two pieces of nice angle steel which i can work with rather than messing around trying to weld or uh, you know, modify aluminium frames. So, that gets us to that point. You can see I've swung the two arms back out the way now. And uh, I'm left with a decision on now uh, how to couple the, uh, the front strut or whatever uh, up to those angles. I can deal with something that can easily be taken off. You can see there's no, uh, without those wheels on there, the seats wanted to blow. It's quite a windy day today. Uh, yeah, so the uh, question is, is what to do? What's up, you two? That's my new... Uh, sheep shack I'm building. It's looking quite good. They already know what it's for. Uh, yeah, so... It's quite easy to get in this without the handle... Uh, sorry, the, 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 the side rails being on. But you can put them on quite easy. Um, you know, you can put once it's bolted all bolted together. You put one on uh, your right hand on the handlebars and uh, left hand on here, and uh, you can step into it reasonably okay. You know. Uh, say where the feet are going to be sat. Is something I haven't really worked out at the moment. So if I put that hand handrail down, you can sit in like so. So you can get in from either the left or the right. Then once you're in, you can um, swing the other handrail over like so and lock it in. So I've now got my feet sat down here on this um, original although probably temporary crossbar 
Um, I got my hands on the on the handlebars quite easy. That all works, and even my size 12 feet fit in that space. So, uh, and I can put them out to each side like that. So the question is, is what to do now? Hmm. Need to have a little bit of a think about this for a little while. Don't want to rush it uh, too much. Could do with something that clips on and off. Uh, clips on and off. Um, I think the steel's all right. That can stay there. You know, I could just make a steel frame and have it so that I have to take these uh, four bolts in and out. Uh, put wing nuts on, and uh, I could weld. Well, no, I couldn't weld the heads of those bolts. I'd have to. Uh, you'd have to use a spanner or something to put them on and off. But it wouldn't be excessively hard to do. But clips are the best ways. Anyway, let's get myself out of this. And if I put this video on YouTube, please YouTube, don't put in a copyright thing just because my radio's playing in the background. It's a bloody pain in the bum when they do that. Um, yeah, so... Any thoughts, guys?